Colleagues, I trust we all know how fortunate and how blessed we are to have this opportunity to save or create three million jobs and protect thousands of businesses as we meet the needs of America's transportation system. Let me make this point, Senator Schumer in particular, to you. There's something wrong with this. There is no other group of Americans that get this chance. None. Nowhere. Does anyone else have this opportunity? Failure is not an option for us. Not when 70,000 of our bridges are deficient, not when 50% of our roads are below standard, and not when construction businesses and workers are suffering. Not when thousands of middle class construction jobs are being lost right now due to the extensions. Because of these endless extensions, many states have limited the funds available to hire workers for construction projects due to funding uncertainty, costing thousands of jobs across America right now in each of our states. What we do here today and in the days and weeks ahead has ramifications for so many businesses. Today, just a couple of hours ago, I met with a California oil refinery and learned that one third of their business is asphalt production. And that business has declined 40 to 50 percent. The uncertainty of funding for transportation programs is hurting them badly. In addition, I learned from the Association of Equipment Dealers that the same uncertainty has caused construction businesses to rent equipment rather than to buy equipment. And this has depressed the business of the equipment dealers, placing a further drag on the economy and increasing unemployment. As we work to pass a new transportation bill, here is a picture I want you to keep in mind. It's a Super Bowl stadium filled to capacity. Look at it. Imagine 12 of these stadiums filled to capacity. That's how many unemployed construction workers there are today, 1.2 million. So when we start getting into arguments or battles or fights, think about those families and think about the businesses who hire them. They're counting on us and they should. Look, if Senator Inhofe and Senator Boxer can agree on a bill, then we all can agree on a bill. If Senator Sessions and Senator Sanders can agree on a bill, we can all agree on a bill. If Senator Baucus and Senator Blunt can agree on a bill, we can all agree on a bill. Now, many pundits and experts have predicted gloom and doom when it comes to this bill. They were wrong in the past. They said it was over, it was gone, it would never happen, we'd never pass it through the Senate, the House wouldn't act, we'd never be here. We're here. Now the ball is in our court, those of us around this table. It is our job and we will do it. And we have the wind at our backs because we have a Senate bill, MAP 21, that is a reform bill that received 74 votes. It protects and creates three million jobs and a million of those came out of a program I worked with Se uh, Senator Inhofe and Chairman Micah on as well as uh, Mr. Rahal. It's a expanded TIFIA program which leverages dollars 30 to one. So that's an additional million jobs. So I want you all to know from the House in particular, this is, this bill, MAP 21, a real reform bill. It consolidates 90 programs just in the highway part alone into 30. It eliminates earmarks. It gives states flexibility. It establishes performance measures, accelerates project delivery that I know is so important to you, and it sets up a new freight program. The country needs us to pass a surface transportation bill so we can fix our aging infrastructure, put people back to work, boost the economy. The health of our businesses and our workers depend on it. And again, why do we have the wind at our backs? Because look at some of the groups that are supporting us. Just look at this. This is really amazing. Just a few of the 500. AAA, AFL-CIO, American Association of State Highway and Transit Officials, the Public Transportation Association, the Transportation Builders, <laughs> the Civil Engineers, the Truckers, the General Contractors, the Equipment Dealers, the Distributors, the Equipment Manufacturers, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and again I say, if the AFL-CIO and the Chamber of Commerce can work together, surely we can work together here. In addition to our core mission, 
We have a wonderful opportunity with the Restore Act, the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund, the Secure, Secure Rural Schools Program. So colleagues, I look forward to working with each and one, every one of you. My door is always open, and I know we can succeed. It's my honor to turn to uh, Vice Chairman Micah.